it was not an impulsive decision. I have long-term relationships. Any relationship I'm no longer in. A man, a business, a friend, I have walked away from. Ain't no niggas walking away from me. Smash your pass. Mm. Hey guys, welcome to Little Black Button 91. We are talking to you guys about B Simone and Megan. Now you've watched my previous videos. Um, we like to go deep on this channel. I want to say this first and foremost. How does a friend turn to an enemy? Well, the easiest way from a friend to turn to an enemy is when you start questioning their intent, right? See, this video here, the impact of this video is that many people commented under the video and, and on, on online as well and said the impact of it made them think that B Simone don't like at Megan, right? Because that cheeky comment that she made there about I've walked away from every other friend made people's ears kind of stand up and like, whoa, what's going on? Why are you saying that you've walked away from every single friend so arrogantly? And it makes it seem like now Megan's the actual issue and you're saying that and you're almost putting yourself as a victor. The tone, the energy, the, the gesticulation, the facial expression, it was kind of all just leading up to a point of saying, well, I, I don't suffer here. You know what I'm saying to you? Like, I walk away. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm OK. Right. And the impact for us as an audience is we're reading it saying she don't like we're thinking that maybe she doesn't like Megan anymore. Maybe they, maybe they're at odds. Maybe they're now enemies. But the reality is, is because most of us are not looking at the impact, we are looking at the intention. See, in a friendship or even a relationship in general, there is intent versus impact. Impact is the collision, the force that something hits with. Intent is about the aim or the purpose or the meaningfulness, mean, meaningfulness behind the action. So did I mean to kill you and it becomes manslaughter? I didn't mean to. But if I intend, if I if I intended to murder you, uh, intended to kill you, it's murder, right? And so what that means is we are judging the intent versus impact. Well, friendships break up when you start to question that other person's intent. See, we can all forgive an impact. For instance, you say something rude, and I'm like, Do you know what? That hurt my feelings, right? You apologize. I say that's cool. But you say something rude, and I'm like, Hold on a minute. Your intent. You meant to say that. No, no, you meant to say, I now make a judgment on the intent and I make a judgment of right versus wrong or good versus evil. Whenever you start making judgments on whether something's right or wrong, you are about to enter a place of argument. OK, whenever we make a judgment, especially prematurely on whether something's right or wrong, especially in friendships, it leads to arguments because people feel judged. And when they feel judged, they're like, I'm not a bad person. But when you make a judgment on versus good versus evil, yes, you meant to hurt me. You're making a judgment on good versus evil. That person feels some type of way. Now, the funny thing is about intent versus impact is that it's all about perception, right? You may perceive that my intent was to actually hurt you and I plan to hurt you. And I tell you, no, I didn't mean that, right? And because your, the impact of my actions have hurt your feelings. But it's all about perception and how you're perceiving me, right, in that moment. Looking at B. Simone and Megan at the where they are right now, and I'm gonna play another clip for you guys of Megan and B. Simone. It's quite interesting to see how they are talking about one another or how they broke up. This particular video here is almost giving a little bit of sense of an arrogance, like, you know what, no one walks away from me, I walk away from them. You know what I'm saying to you? I'm above them. You know what I'm saying to you? I'm the one that is valuable here, right? And really, it's almost it's almost deprecating of your friend to almost raise yourself up. They've come into rivalry. This is actually what we call female competition. When you begin to denigrate the other party in order to lift yourself up, this is actually part of psychology, what we call female competition. When females, sorry, I shouldn't say female, I do apologize. When women compete, okay, because women are not females. When women compete, they go into what we call denigration. They start to, uh, they start to uh, downplay and kind of almost, you know, kind of deface verbally the other party to make themselves look better. So when you're saying, oh, you know, no one walks away from me, you're making yourself a little bit better and you've entered, you've entered into a place of competition. But a friendship can't survive if you're in competition. Does that make sense? If that makes sense for me, make sure you leave a comment down below. Look, we're going to get deep on this. I'm going to get deeper. So stick with this. I'm going to get deeper. I promise you. Stick with us. Deeper. All right. So we're going to play another clip here. I'm going to show you a clip of Megan Ashley, um, her t talking about the situation on Megan uh, uh, Megan about herself and uh, B. Simone. And you're going to find it quite intriguing to kind of hear her response about the situation. Listen here. And you realize, you know, 
maybe this this doesn't serve me anymore on both sides. And so, um, you know, you just want the best for people and then you just kind of move on for whatever God has for your life and you bless, you know, whatever they got going on. You just bless them and you move on. How did that feel though from a, cause oh, like, it's painful. It yeah, sucks. It felt like a death. Oh, huh? it is. It absolutely does. I mean, it still feels like a death, you know, it sucks. It's not easy. Is there um, times where something happened, you want to pick up the phone and call your best friend? You'd be like, no, that, that don't, mm-hmm. you pass that stage? Yeah, no, there, there's none of that. But there is, you know, it's grief, you know. And Now, let me be very honest and very real with you. Listen, they may not have actually broken up. They may be actually going in two, two different directions, right? But it feels like a breakup. And when I say breakup, I'm talking about an actual breakup of the friendship, meaning that there's probably going to be no repair from the situation, right? Drifting apart is very different from breaking up. When you when we talk about drifting apart, what we're talking about is a separation of values, right? So when you when you're drifting from your friend, many of us have friends who we no longer are still cool with, or we, we're not in constant contact with, but we pick up the phone at every other few months or whatever, and it's like nothing's ever broken, right? You got that friend that you can call every three months, and it's like we never left. We never let, we, we, we haven't stopped talking. Why? Because the relationship is still intact because the trust is still there, right? But when values begin to shift and change, we drift apart, right? Emotionally, physically, we can drift apart too. But when relationships get to a point where you don't want to talk to each other at 10, again, like that, I don't even want to pick up the phone to her and B Simone is now shading her potentially as well on her video. We are getting to a place where we call broken trust. Friendships break up when trust is broken. And so I want to just quickly bring some of these definitions for you guys really, really quickly. Impact, again, is about the collision, the force of something hitting versus intention, meaning meaningful, purposeful. Um, you know, uh, it was done with some level of quote unquote, I'm going to use a word to describe it, intent, right? Um, and so when we talk about trust in a relationship, what is trust? Trust is the belief in the real- reliability, the truth, ability, or the strength of something. Trust is the belief that someone or something can be relied on to do what they say they will. So when when trust is broken in a friendship or a relationship in general, and you begin to question intent, because when, when trust is broken, intent is now questioned. What we're saying is we don't, we cannot rely on what that person says or does. So if you're telling me that wasn't your intent, I can't trust your intent because I don't trust what you say anymore. Do you see where the friendship is breaking up? When we get from impact and saying, you hurt my feelings, you put a video out, you've hurt my feelings, and I say to you, it wasn't my intent to hurt your feelings, but I realize the impact. And you go, I forgive you, it's okay. I knew your intent wasn't to try and hurt me. I know your impact. But when you question the intent now, right? And we get to that place, your friendships in rocky places and potentially you're about to become enemies. Because when you start questioning intent, the only people that you question intent are usually people who are haters, your enemies and people you don't like. You don't question the intent of your friends. You question the intent of people you don't like, who are your enemies and who are haters because they don't have good what? Intent. They don't have no good plans for you. They don't have nothing uh, good in store for you. They are intending meaningful, purposeful to try and hurt you. Right? That's where friendships begin to get a little bit tricky. So the fact that now we've got Megan and we've got B. Simone in a place where they don't want to really talk. They don't really want to speak at this point. And we've got B. Simone shading her potentially. We've got, we've got uh, uh, Megan saying she, you know, I don't even think about calling her no more. Of course, she's grieving the death of that relationship, that friendship, right? We're in a very precarious place. Now, I, I think what's really powerful about this scenario, about this situation, um, is the fact that when you go deeper with this, I, and go back to what we talked about in, the, in our last videos, we talked about the attachment styles that both of these people bring to the table. Uh, Megan, I believe, is an anxious person and B. Simone being an avoidant. And all that simply means is uh, how you attach to people. Avoidance don't create very emotional relationships. They're very focused on, I'm here for a short time, not, maybe not a long time, I don't wanna disappoint you. So don't get too emotionally attached. And they tend to lean out of relationships. Whereas uh, uh, anxious people, um, they want to uh, create environments where they are, their value is based upon their relationships, right? So they, they, they want to uh, show their care and their appreciation and they, they want to be intimate in a relationship. They want to be emotional. They want to, you know, they want, they want to be, you know, uh, validated by that prospect. Whereas the avoidance like, listen, my validation doesn't, it's not coming from a relationship, bro. I can't afford for my validation to come from a relationship because really and truly, 
I haven't had that in my childhood. So it's me and me only. And if you're part of that, brilliant, beautiful. If you're not, that's cool. I just want you to be disappointed if I can't be there all the time. And the anxious person looks like, I want to be there all the time. But they look needy and they look over caring and they look like they're jealous. They look like possessive and they're becoming coddling almost in a sense, right? Whereas avoiding looks like he's self-reliant, but now they are alienated or they are too separate or they are too independent hyper-independent and they don't rely on, on anybody and fail to connect emotionally. And these two create what we I like to call this hamster wheel of issues because the anxious person looks to hold on to the avoidant as the avoidant is becoming overwhelmed by the holding, tries to pull away. And it becomes this vicious cycle. As you're pulling, I'm pushing. As you're, as, sorry, as I'm pulling away, you're trying to pull me back in. As I'm trying to leave, you're trying to pull me back in, right? And as I, as, I, as I lean away, you're trying to pull me, uh, you're trying to lean in. And so what ends up happening is, you, it, what ends up is a cycle of behaviors, okay? The, the, the avoidant person who I think is B. Simone in this, in this situation is gonna be concentrating on self-reliance and um, you know, not being overwhelmed by your emotional state. The anxious person is sometimes a, a emotional to a degree that the avoidant person feels like they're overwhelmed, almost like when a computer becomes too hot. And the anxious person becomes more anxious because the avoidant person doesn't stay, doesn't lead relationships with the emotion. And so the anxious person is consistently, uh, consistently questioning their status and their importance and their care in the relationship from the other party. But it becomes this very, again, hamster wheel because the anxious person will hold on to the avoidant in order to prove that they're that they are to prove and be to be proved that they are cared for and be validated, and the avoidant person is like you're doing too much. And no, by the way, no one's no one's no one's no one's writing this. You're doing too much. You're becoming too clingy for me. I don't like it. But it's because the avoidant person doesn't know how to deal with intimate relationships. So what does the avoidant person do? They run away, right? And avoidant people have a trouble connecting emotionally, so they end up usually connecting through sex, right? They tend to be very promiscuous easily because we are able to uh, connect on that level because it doesn't require so much of the emotional baggage that we feel life and relationships comes with all right call me when you need me is what an avoidant person is whereas an anxious person says you don't need to call me i want to anticipate your needs and because they want to anticipate your needs they become controlling and possessive right and they they, they the relationship their sense of worth can come from these relationships right and it can be badly broken that's why we're getting two different responses from b simone and megan not because they're necessarily bad people but they 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 resonate on different levels now someone might be angry and look at b simone's video earlier on and be like you know what the way she did her situation with um and megan is so rude and dis disrespectful you know the way she laughed and i would say there's some parts of it which i agree that's why some people some some people say that avoidance sometimes almost have narc traits it seems as if they don't care, but it's not that they don't care. It's the fact that they have to be self-reliant. They've been taught through emotional neglect and through no emotional input, usually from a parent, that if they don't rely on themselves, who else can they rely on? And when you're born with, when you're, when you're, when you're nurtured into that thought process, it is you and you alone. You haven't got a choice. I can't afford to, 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 to be reliant on you because if you remove the pillars, I'm going to die, right? Whereas, and, and so what will end up happening is a person who is B. Simone will end up cutting the relationship very, very swift, which is why if we go back to our clip, and we go back to our clip again, and you hear B. Simone talking, Omar, hold on, about how she has to almost praise, no one's ever left me, I've always left them. Really what she's doing is she's boasting about her self-reliance. She's hurt. That's the reality of the situation. She's hurt. But she doesn't know how to really tap into her own emotions very well to be able to really decipher that. And this is why she's going to keep repeating the same patterns of mistakes. And I want to be honest, I'm going to do a part two of this video. Don't think Megan is innocent in this situation. Oh, baby. When I start bringing some more clips for you, you're going to realize what I said about Megan and what I said about B. Simone. Both the anxious and the avoidant are manipulative. There's nobody that's free. Some of you are going to watch this video and go, uh, that's why I don't like avoidance. They're so bad. They're this. No, no, your anxiety is also a problem. You're controlling, you're possessive, and you're jealous. Okay. And the, the avoidant person is self-reliant. They're sometimes egotistical and they are selfish. Hella selfish. <laughs> okay. Can be hella selfish. So let's play this clip again one more time, just to kind of get a little bit of perspective on what I'm saying again about
was not an impulsive decision. I have long-term relationships. Any relationship I'm no longer in. A man, a business, a friend, I have walked away from. Now, this might be a clip for something else. Oh, this might be a clip for something else, but the reality of the situation is it was a boast, right? And, it, and she cut it in a particular way that made, it, made us want to talk about it, right? But in, in doing so, we're now questioning her intent, okay? So the avoidant person, when, they're coming, when it comes to their intent, an avoidant person's intent isn't to hurt you. They're not trying to hurt you. An avoidant person isn't necessarily trying to hurt you, but what they understand is if we're not going to have this friendship any longer, if it no longer serves me, if this friendship is now going to break down, if you're going to remove the pillars of this friendship and I'm no longer going to have you, let me cut the cord quickly. Why are you wasting time? Snip! Before you drag it on and we get hurt more, snip it quickly. You're wasting my time, right? And so that's what the avoidant person does. Their, their intent isn't to hurt you. Their intent is to make sure that they are protected. But the impact that gets made on somebody else is that they don't care about me. Oh, they just, they, they, their relationship is over already? They can be like that? Oh, they must have never loved me. They must have never really cared about who I was. They must have really never cared about what I, what I do, right? And that's the reality of the situation. But in the other aspect, for the, the anxious person receiving this, right, they're going to be like, yeah, they, they, they were trying to hurt me on purpose. Like, I cared about them. I loved them. I, I appreciate them, Right? But the reality is when, the, and we're going to talk about this probably in part two, when the anxious person is doing certain things, right? And I'm going to play a clip for you, maybe next in part two, where Megan says how she realized she was manipulative. And I said, yeah, right? But you won't, you won't see that. So when we talk about intent versus impact, we will only question B. Simone's because B. Simone is very obvious. But the thing about an anxious person is they're very good at covering up. You see, they're very good at covering up their selfishness because they're gonna, they're willing to, they're willing underneath a banner to tell you, "I did it for us. I, I, I didn't cuss you out for us. I did it for us." When really, it's not for us; it's for you. You have a reputation to keep. The anxious person has a reputation to keep, which is, "I got to keep this good reputation. I got to keep this loving reputation. I got to keep this I'm a good person reputation." Because their relationship with their childhood is that they were. Uh, uh, it, they were inconsistently loved and they were always in a place because they were inconsistently loved trying to figure out how to get this love how to be validated and in doing so they played the good child and so the good child if I play the good child I'll get the benefits of the parent love and care right so that you end up becoming a goody two-shoes but reality is you're manipulative but we don't see it because you don't show it outwardly so the avoidant becomes a bad person. And that doesn't mean an avoidant person isn't a bad person. But, but they're both bad. This is why the friendship has broken up. This is why your friendship is at the point it is now. This is why you're now at a point where you're shading your best friend. Because at this point in time too, be Simone, your intent. What are you trying to intend on doing? But since I don't know you too well, let me stick with your impact. The impact is wrong. And potentially the intent could be wrong. Right? Potentially. Okay? So we're going we to we we put uh, part two on this, but I want you to rem remember this point. Your friendship is at the rocks when you start questioning that person's intent. Your relationship, your friendship, your romantic interest, I should say, is on the rocks when you start questioning their intent. When you're always in a place of, what was their intent towards me? What was really their intent? Then you really are in a place where your relationship is, at, is, is on a rocky place. Okay. All right, cool. So, guys, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. What did you think of this particular video? We're going to drop a part two talking about the manipulation that, you know, our good sis spoke about. And hopefully you guys learned something as well. Appreciate you guys. Stay locked, stay loaded. And as always, let's get deep.